continue. And um, so the whole idea is that we are trying to sell wholesome food. That's basically what the laws are trying to do. They are trying to make sure that producers and processors produce and sell wholesome food. Um, there are two main agencies that are in charge of food safety regulations in the USA. And those are the Food Safety Inspection Services from the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Food and Drug Administration from the, uh, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. As you can see, there are two different departments involved. And there has been a lot of talks about trying to you know, centralize everything in an agency. But historically, this is what we have. So these are the two main regulatory agencies. However, there are Can you hear me now? Can, yeah. Okay, I I apologize for that. I don't know what happened. We Heidi, we were trying to find out what was the issue. Um, yeah, hopefully it will be great. Yeah. So I was. Uh, I guess I I lost you when I was here, and I was talking about the Department of Transportation as an example. So let's review now the oversight authorities of these two agencies, the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the FDA. The USDA really has oversight authority in all products containing 2% of meat, including beef, pork, and poultry, and anything related to processed eggs. Um, the USDA has a daily continuous implant inspection. If you go to all these uh, federally, federally inspected plants, there is an inspector in charge. And sometimes, according to the size of the plant, there will be other inspectors that are paid by the government. And the plants only operate if uh, those inspectors are uh, on site. Um, in the case of the USDA and FDA, they have quite a bit to say in the warehouse uh, of, of food, food warehouses, and also in the ports where the food is coming from other countries uh, when they imported food. 
So, for instance, if there is an imported food that uh, belongs to the jurisdiction of USDA, there will be a, some USDA representative, you know, inspecting those imported foods. Um, the, um, this is the example of the USDA jurisdiction, um, briefly. The FDA really takes on everything else that the USDA doesn't take, including the shell eggs, that is the eggs that are still on the shell. The difference in here with the USDA is that FDA does not provide for a continuous daily inspection. There are inspectors that may appear on those uh, plants producing food under the FDA jurisdiction, but probably you know most of the time, you know, those inspectors don't even show up. So the FDA has a very large jurisdiction when it comes to food commodities, very, very large. Um, an example I give in here is, for instance, the, uh, the pizza with the pepperoni in which uh, you have so many different agencies playing around in there. If the pizza was all vegetable, uh, vegetable pizzas, uh, pizza, m the, the main agency in all those products would be FDA, but once you add pepperoni or any kind of meat, you also have USDA. So some of these establishments are called dual jurisdiction establishment because they have inspectors from both sides. I, I wanted to add this summary of the U.S. Uh, regu regulatory process because it's important to understand how it is done and to understand the, the, you know, the, the power and limitation of some of these agencies. Remember that we have a process in here in which we are uh, requesting public comments and after all these comments are drafted and incorporated, the regulatory agencies come with a final draft that will be, you know, published in the Federal Register. And when the law is in, uh, started, is uh, codified, it goes into what is called the Code of Federal Regulations. So it's very common to see the famous CFR in related to a law. Okay. Um, and the three branches, I'm here in this slide, I'm putting the three branches of uh, the government. You can see the interplay of all of them. And the special one that I'm highlighting here is a little office called the Office of Management and Budget that is part of the executive branch. That office is the one that usually says, you know, how much it will cost to implement some laws. Um, of course, if the process goes through, uh, it goes, uh, it's accepted by the um, executive branch. The Congress has to review the final regulation, approve it, and then the executive branch implement it. Still, the judicial branch can come over and, you know, challenge part of the law or, or the whole law in different courts at the federal or even at the state level. So, although the, the the law appears to be very kind of mean sometimes. The reality is that it's a subtle game of lawyers trying to find the best way to accommodate a regulation and finding how we're going to pay for that. Because at the end of the day, we all taxpayers in a direct or indirect way, we are paying for those uh, regulations. So these uh, federal agencies, have a tremendous power because they can be the lawmaker. They suggest the laws to, do, to be implemented. They implement the laws for the, uh, uh, so they are also prosecutors. And they can decide about the outcome of the implementation. But all of this is within a very narrow separation of power and very narrow area of, ex of expertise. Uh, there are a lot of procedures that are you know, put in place to make sure that things are controlled. And again, the decisions can always be appealed in the court uh, system. Um, yeah, so um, Heidi just wrote that there. In general, 
if we uh, see the evolution, uh, the evolution of our food safety regulations has traditionally been based on visual inspection and that has been and is still active I I under the USDA regulations. Uh, but we are slowly moving into what we talked at the beginning about risk-based approaches. Okay, the term wholesome, adulterated, those are important terms that are still used. And um, we are all wondering if we will be moving towards a reward system in which we try to reward for those that implement more food safety barrier. We have had some of those examples in Europe and we are all looking at it to see what's going to happen in the future and if that's going to permeate into our systems in the USA. When it comes to state regulatory agencies, we have basically two, the Department of Health with the headquarters in Burlington and the Agency of Ag that is housed in Montpelier. And I put in there the, um, the website, it's very easy for you to get to those websites. They are the one implementing not only the, reg uh, the federal regulations but also the way the state is interpreting some of those regulations and some particular state laws that may be important for some commodities. It's, uh, I always advise uh, to get first in touch with the Department of um, the Department of Health in Burlington because they are the ones that are going to be providing to you with a form that you can download from the internet and um, try to start a license to have a business. Um, many people call sometimes and say, well, I am small enough or I don't have a big, you know, budget or, you know, I'm not, I, I'm exempt because of the volume and I shouldn't do it. However, I still advise them to get in touch with um, the state licensing agency because they can help them really at the local level to make sure that they are doing uh, things in the correct way. Remember, as Heidi was saying, uh, this is um, an idea that, that food safety gives you a peace of mind. It helps you make sure that you have continuity in your uh, um, work and uh, you reduce the risk of having some, some uh, problems with your uh, food product. So, um, we also put together a little extension bulletin that is really an update on the web page so far. Uh, and that can tell you a little bit about how to navigate the basics of the uh, regulations at the state and federal level. Again, in a nutshell, in just a few minutes, it's very difficult to, you know, uh, summarize everything that goes beyond, uh, behind how the laws are, are made. But um, I hope this is going to give you an idea and um, see how we can, um, you know, you can improve with your, with your um, uh, businesses. There are already some questions and uh, I'm going to ask uh, Heidi to... Okay, so I'm going to read this. We have some questions. One was about fermented products, but I guess the person or the, the participants already left. There are some other questions about chicken, ducks, and milk, meat, and uh, goat milk. Well, um, if they are uh, not exempt, there are exemptions, and those exemptions come through the uh, agency of Ag. So they can give you some of those exemptions. If we're assuming this producer is not exempt, it's going to be under the Federal Inspection Act, the Meat and Poultry Inspection Act. And therefore, every time they process either meat or chickens or poultry in general, chickens and turkey, they will have to have an inspection. Now, those inspectors at the state level, they may be local inspectors that are um, hired from uh, another agency to be sent, but there should be a federal inspector every time they are um, 
you know, processing. I'm not sure if that's the specific question. When it comes to milk, there is a different one. These are the milk ordinances, and that's different. Uh, again, the, the agency that will be in charge of that will be the agency of ag, and I would really suggest that they get in touch with the agency of ag to understand some of the specific regulations when it comes to milk, if they have some, some questions. Is there any other questions that you may have? And uh, maybe some questions uh, cannot be uh, answered right away, but um, I guess I we have my email address there at the beginning. Yeah, you, we can go back. Yeah, we will give you a survey link first. Uh, make sure, please, to send us your feedback, and then we will show some of the email, uh, the email address for Haiti and me, or if, in, uh, if not, at least with the one from Haiti, so you can get in touch with us. Yeah. Yeah. We are going to type the uh, email addresses um, so you can be in touch with us. If you also visit our website at the extension and, and type food safety, you can um, find there the contact information, my contact information, and you can either call me or drop an email message. Z A. Mm -hmm. Is there any other questions? Well, if not, I thank you very much uh, for your participation. I will uh, give the microphone back to to Heidi. Thanks. Okay. If there are no other questions at this point. Um, then again, as Omar suggested, please feel free to contact us directly through our email addresses, uh, through going to the UVM Extension website. We'll be having another uh, webinar on uh, February 11th, and that's going to be on wholesaling uh, food and working, working with developing your wholesale market. And uh, again, there are a number of other great uh, educational opportunities if you visit the UVM Extension calendar. Um, a, a number of great courses and webinars are coming up over the next uh, few weeks to a month that uh, I would encourage you to check out and, and uh, take advantage of. So thank you all for joining us. And uh, please do fill out the survey. And uh, if you weren't able to get all the information you needed from this, you can also check at the website for the recording. Thanks very much.